The Lord said you shall receive power when my spirit comes upon you. You shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle us in the fire of your love. Would you pray with me? Kindling Spirit, build well the fire in our hearts this day. Fan us to flame that all will see the Christ presence of love blazing in our midst. Burn the witness on our tongues. Christ's spirit moves among us. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, has set his church on fire with strength and boldness and power. Kindling spirit, build well the fire in our hearts this day. In God we pray. Amen. This is the day of Pentecost, the day we remember how God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit so we could do and say the wonderful things Jesus did. It happened after Jesus went away. The people of God were in Jerusalem to celebrate the great feast of Thanksgiving called Pentecost. People came from all countries. Jesus' friends were in Jerusalem too. They were waiting for the gift God had promised them, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, this sound of a mighty wind filled the entire room and what looked like flames of fire came to rest on them and all were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were so excited, they began to tell about the amazing things God did. They told about Jesus and how God had raised Jesus from the dead. The people from all the different countries could understand them. They each heard in their own language and they asked, what should we do? Peter said, change your ways, be baptized. You will be washed clean and new, and the gift of the Holy Spirit will be upon you. God's promise is for you and for your children and for all the people God has called to him. I wonder I wonder what it felt like to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. I wonder how Jesus' friends felt as they told about the amazing things God did. I wonder how they knew this was the Holy Spirit. I wonder what the Holy Spirit wants us to do with God's gifts. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. 
and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen! Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Scripture is different since COVID-19. Well, the story hasn't changed any, but our viewpoint has. Our perspective and interpretation of what's happening in Scripture based on what we're experiencing in today's time is different. We're drawn to words and phrases and sentiments that speak impact to our position, to what we're going through, to this pandemic we all face. We need to go no further than the very first verse of the Pentecost story to know that we're seeing things differently these days. And they were all together in one place. What? Braggers? That's not fair. They get to be together? Oh, we long so desperately to want to be together in one physical place. That place being our sanctuary. A chance to come together, especially on this Pentecost Sunday, to celebrate the gift of the Spirit together, blowing in our midst, telling us what are we supposed to do next. Our patience is wearing thin. People are feeling stir-crazy. Caution is appropriate, but yet we still want to be together in one place. Our board had a difficult decision to make the last time they met. And we decided to put July 5th on the calendar as a target date to return to worship together. 64% of the 100 people that took part in our survey asking the question, when would you feel most comfortable returning to church? 64% said July or later. So it was faithful for us to go with that understanding. We are in this together. We are as strong as our weakest members. Yes, worship is essential. And that has never stopped. And for weeks now, our general minister and president, Terry Horde Owens, has, recur has encouraged disciples churches to take a slow path to reentry. And this hasn't changed today. Our general minister and president said, we have never closed the church, just the buildings. And she was right. Disciples of Christ, pastor and activist, Visionary with the Poor People's Campaign, Dr. William Barber II said, Houses of worship are not essential, but true worship is. When was I hungry and did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was a stranger, did you take me in? When I was naked, did you clothe me? 
When I was sick or in prison, did you visit me? The church has never closed. We have not stopped worshiping. We've not stopped caring for one another. We keep in contact. We check on one another via phone calls or text messages or Facebook or Zoom meetings. We keep in contact. We may not be actively doing some of the ministries that we are most proud of, but we are trying to do something, those essential things. You may not know this, but our Baby Grace Ministries continue to provide diapers every month, setting up a drive-in system to the parking lot to make sure that they get diapers and wipes and, and bags of clothing. They may not get to choose, but they are still getting to take something with them. We are still being church as best we can. Our outreach ministries continuing to distribute funds so the needs of the people continue to be met. This will lead us to what our next real big challenge for the year is going to need to be. How do we desire to be church to those who need Christ most? Not only through the rest of this pandemic, but long into 2020 and into 2021. What needs are we meeting in our surrounding community? How are we being together in that one place? The times have changed. We are now in the pandemic era. What role will we play to bring hope, to bring grace, to bring peace to those in need? Raymore Christian Church is up for the challenge. But man, how times have changed. And how quickly being together in one place holds a different meaning than it did three months ago for us. The disciples in today's story would say something similar. They were together in one place because that was Jesus' advice. He told them to just before he ascended into the heavens. Stay together in Jerusalem. It's not quite time. Not yet. It wasn't quite time. The Holy Spirit will come to you, but not quite yet. But that's why they were all together. Jesus told them to be. He never said, did you notice, be in the temple in one place. Besides, they weren't safe there. Let us not forget that the followers of Jesus were seen as his associates, still a threat. So they were in lockdown, safely together. That is something we do have in common. Our one place of being together is in our homes, collectively kept apart. But as the Holy Spirit proved on that day of Pentecost, it could find God's people wherever they were. And equally important to note, it wasn't just that handful of Jesus' disciples locked in a house that received such a blessing. The rushing wind could be heard by all. Those inside or out, we know this from our story as out in the street, the crowd had gathered and they were speaking in languages that one another could understand. A gift only brought about by the Holy Spirit to all who were willing to receive it. And what the disciples saw happening out in the streets gave them conviction. They could now speak to what was happening for they completely understood. They recalled what Jesus was trying to teach them. They could help others make sense out of this gift of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming over and over and over again. And now it was coming into fruition. These tongues of flame dancing upon them, filling them with a sense of purpose. They could do anything. They had what it takes and they all felt it. They were in agreement. They were all in the same place but this time metaphorically speaking. We too are together in our understanding as disciples, together in our longing to serve Christ by loving as he did, together in the belief that church is a people and not a building or a weekly gathering. We are essential in so many more life-giving ways and we will continue to be. We are together in that. The more I think about this first line of scripture, and they were together in one place, I see its metaphoric truth in ways I never have before. 
For communities of faith to be successful, they must find their common voice. And we know ours. It's our mission statement, Raymore Christian Church. This is our purpose, to know and love God by practicing the gospel, welcoming, affirming, serving, and caring for all people. We are together in that one place. This is who we are. We are in agreement on this. God welcomes all to the table, and so do we. Nothing excludes anyone from the love of God. You being gay or straight, black, brown, or white, broken or whole, rich or poor, employed or laid off, you have a place to belong. Sinner or sinner, comfortable or still not ready to return to church. Whether you're a baby grace family or a volunteer helping you shop, we are together in this. God's grace, mercy, and love abounds and it is accessible to all. All of us are needing and all of us are worthy of grace and love. We are together in one place in that. We are a community. We are the body of Christ. Today we celebrate that spirit of Pentecost. The church is born. The Holy Spirit shows us in our homes this morning to remind us that we are worthy. We belong. Jesus has never left his disciples. We know his desire to feed, to love, to clothe, to welcome, to witness. He will send his spirit to see us through. And it has happened. We're together in this. God is here. God is present. And we have hope. There is a promise fulfilled. And it is for all of us to be together on this. Amen.
our place as disciples is around the table of communion. Here in our homes, on our makeshift altars and tables, we have those common elements of bread and cup. But on this day, especially with the gift of the Spirit, with the understanding and promise that our Christ is with us, something amazing happens. We are spiritually transformed. We are all together in this one place of knowing God is with us, that there is something more to and for us. So like those disciples standing in awe, wondering, ready for what was to come next, we on this day of Pentecost take bread and we bless it and we break it. And we remember, as Jesus said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we take our common cup and we know that it is blessed by the spirit of our Christ. And we do this in remembrance of him, knowing that our sins are forgiven. Each time we come to this place in our hearts, in our worship, in our preparation for the week ahead, taking that Holy Spirit into our beings, remembering in bread and cup the promise of our Christ. Let us pray blessing over this meal. Holy Christ, you told your people to wait, that the Spirit would come upon them, and it has and it is. Your Spirit is here. O oh God, bless us that in these elements of bread and cup, we are reminded that our Christ has never left us. Jesus is here. We have the power. We have what it takes. We have the Holy Spirit. As we take this bread and drink this cup, may we recall and remember what this birthday of the church means, where we are to go, and how through each and every one of us, your spirit is building to something greater than we could ever be by ourselves. In Christ, we do humbly and graciously pray. Amen.
Another way that we know the Holy Spirit is dancing among us is because we continue to be church in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We are doing the good work as we continue to faithfully support Raymore Christian Church. Not only do we support our church, but we have faithfully supported our denomination and the many ministries that take part within our greater church. Today, we celebrate our Pentecost offering. Take a look at how our contributions make a difference beyond our walls. To rejoice, exult, revel. To celebrate the many memorable moments of life, large and small. Perhaps with voices raised in song. Or hearts exploding with excitement. Or family and friends drawn to a holiday table to raise a toast. But how do we celebrate a truly world-changing, life-altering milestone. Such as the welcoming of more than a thousand new churches into the family of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Since 2001, this has been the goal of the 2020 vision. And we reached and exceeded our goal ahead of schedule through the new church movement. Thanks to nurturing disciples like you and your generous support of the Pentecost offering. Each year, Half of this special offering stays in your local region or area to plant and nourish new churches. The other half is used throughout the United States and Canada by New Church Ministry to train, equip, and assist church leaders at events like Leadership Academy. Imagine more than a thousand new and affiliating faith communities in just 20 years, living into the teachings of Jesus Christ. By welcoming the homeless, feeding the hungry, teaching the young, and transforming their communities through hands-on mission and ministry. And know that this is just the beginning. More than a thousand new churches and counting. Celebrate them and our faith with your continued support of the Pentecost offering and the new church movement. So that more disciples will be drawn to our family table. Where all are welcome. And their places are waiting. The blessing of God, whose love creates new life and whose fire burns away our impurities, be with us all on our journey in this life. Amen.